Okay, now let's take it away with tonight's conversation. I don't usually come on here to teach or anything like that because I'm not a teacher, I'm not a preacher, I am an encourager. So guys, please allow me just share very briefly this evening and please, please, please stay with me. Just stay with me and listen to what I have to say. I just said, I'm not a preacher. I'm not a teacher. I'm just a child of God who is an encourager. So about three weeks ago, I took, took up gardening. Yeah. For me, I don't even have plants I, the plants I have indoors are kind of like plastic plants from Ikea. Thank God they kind of look real because I, I kill these plants. I, honestly, I tried many years ago, but they just all died and I just gave up. But where I live, we have like a little garden patch in front of the, the flat, you know, and um, for many years, a lady had been tending to this, you know, garden patch. And for some reason, she just gave up. And everything started to look dry and people started throwing stuff there. And I, every time I walk past, I just feel really sad. Like, oh, my God, I don't like the way this looks. And one day the Holy Spirit said to me, now you're going to take this on board and you're going to start planting. And I thought, me? But I'll kill all the plants and everything. But guess what, guys? I decided to take on this challenge because I knew I heard from the Holy Spirit. And I just wanted to come into a place that looked nice and, you know, pleasing to the eyes and all that. So what did I do? I started trying to clear everything myself. I wish I could show you guys a picture, but I tried halfway. I couldn't get it done. Then I decided to pay somebody to come and sort of like clear everything down. I didn't want to pay the person to come and plant as well because I knew the Holy Spirit had asked me to do that. I love the way the Holy Spirit operates with me. Guys, the moment I started pre you know, preparing the soil, I started thinking, what do I do? I must take care of the soil. I must get the right plants. I must get the right this. I must get the right that. And guys, this is like three, four weeks now. I have completely transformed that area with the help of the Holy Spirit. Guys, I'm, I may be talking about gardening, but there is a reason for this. And every day I go out for my run in the morning. Before I start running, I look at this garden patch. And I find myself praying about the garden patch. I'm thinking, you're praying over soil. What's this all about? And then one day, when I noticed all my neighbors, they're coming past and said, oh, my God, this is so beautiful. Oh, my God. Even people, neighbors walking on the streets will come and say, somebody even took me to, the, to their flat and said, here, here's some plants. You can plant this as well. My neighbors are giving me money as well. Do this, do that. You can buy this. You can buy that. One day, the Holy Spirit said to me, How's your garden growing? And I thought he was referring to the garden, the you know, the, the, the one I was tending. But he said, I'm talking about your heart, your life. And he said, in relation to dating and marriage. I don't know what this topic would mean to you, but I know what that did for me. So guys, it may mean something different for everyone listening today. Oh gosh, I'm looking at the comments now. Someone said you should plant you should plant orchids as the cereal plants as the cereal plant plant killers. Okay, um, cactus. Yes, yes, yes. I'm planting a few of those. But guys, this topic may mean something different to everybody. But I know for a fact that God wanted me to come on here to encourage somebody or everybody with this topic. How is your garden growing? So tonight I've invited my cousin. She's been here before. Her name is Reverend Fumila Yovon. Um, she's a priest in the Church of England. She's my cousin. She's my friend. She's my confidant. She's my, she's, she's a lot younger. She's younger than me, but we get on like a house on, should I say like a house on fire? I respect everything that comes out of her. I tell you, she is a wise woman. I've invited her to just come and share with us. And then I'll open the floor to people to come up and share as well. Whatever you, you think the Holy Spirit has laid on your heart with regards to this conversation uh, for tonight. Guys, we've laughed, we've joked, we've talked about different things. We've, we, we, we've done the skits and stuff like that. But let's let's have a heart to heart this evening. Let's talk how is your garden growing? Okay, so um, Reverend Fumilayo, I can't see you. Please, wherever you are, if you want to raise your hand so I can bring you up, fantastic. I'm going to give her the microphone to share for a few minutes and guys, start to get your hearts prepared to come and share whatever God lays on your heart. Okay, Reverend Fumilayo, you have the microphone. 
You can unmute yourself. Okay, she's okay. Hi. Good evening or good morning, wherever you are in the world. Thank you, my cousin. Um, as I was thinking of this topic, um, I don't know for those in England, um, there were many years ago where our king, King Charles, people used to make fun of him because he used to talk to his plants and they used to call him a weirdo. Why is he talking to the plants? You know, can the plants hear him? You know, that what a strange, um, when he was a prince. And um, there was something about that because those plants, you know, our plants, the soil, everything has ears created by God. They have ears to hear. And um, so what he was doing, he was speaking life into the soil. He was speaking to his plants, telling them how much he loved them, you know, the way he used to clean them, everything. And his plants were blossoming and he's making money from his, um, from his um, business now. And so, and I was thinking about, I have plants in the house that I've had for a number of years. And I thought if King Charles can talk to his plants and they live, I can talk to my plants. So I talk to my plants. I tell my plants how much I love them. I stroke them. I wipe them, you know, I water my plants um, periodically, like some of them is every two weeks, some one week, my cactus every couple of weeks, you know, I plant them and I speak to them. And so, and this is the same thing because they have ears to hear, they're created by God. And so it's the same thing with our own heart as well, with our lives. What are we saying to ourselves? What am I saying to myself? You know, so we need to speak life into ourselves, speak life, speak wonderful things about we're going to grow. You know, you're beautiful. You're going to meet somebody. You are a treasured person. You are a cherished person. There is so much wealth and goodness in you. You know, your, your, your leaves will not wither, which is a psalm that, you know, your leaves. Just bear with me, please. My phone. Six, nine, seven, three. Just bear with me, please. Uh huh. You know, we're speaking, what does the, Psalm 1 talks about? Our leaves will not wither, but they will forever flourish and they will grow, you know. So all of those things is about us gardening our soul, being kind to ourselves, speaking truth, speaking life. The passage that my um, Osha Shola used was Romans 4, um, speaking life to death, things, calling those things that be not as though they are. And that's how we have to be. It might sound crazy. The same way it, it was crazy for King Charles to be saying those things to his plants, people can hear us saying all these funny things about ourselves, or it may seem funny, but we are speaking truth. We are saying what God is saying about ourselves. We're speaking life. We're speaking hope. We're saying what we want to see. I want to see my plants grow. So I speak it to them. I speak that you're not going to, you're not going to be, um, you're not going to die in this house because this is a house of peace. There's only life in my house. Not the, you know, so I say those things. This is a house of peace. This is a house of love. This is a house of joy. And when people come to my house, they say there's something different about your house. I can feel peace. And I say that's because I tell my house that this is what you are. And there's something that my cousin is going to mention, but I hope you don't mind, Sheshola, if I yeah. mention it that I'm talking. That's okay. You know, we, 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 we've been praying for um, a husband for a while, but we've taken it to the place now where, even though we have not seen that husband um, physically, but he's around in this world. And so every morning when we call each other, when we send messages to each other to bless our day, and that's another thing about about that watering. Whose lives are we watering? Every morning, my cousin and I, we water each other's lives. We say to each other about how um, she's gonna have a blessed day. She's gonna have a productive day, you know? And then I say to her, I speak blessings over her dog. How is Lady Lakari? How is my in-law, which is her husband, that's, that, that may not be physically here, but in, our, in, our, in faith, he is here. How is my in-law? How is Lady Latari? And I say, my, your in-law is fine. Your in-law is looking after me well. Your in-law and, and my dog is fine. So we're speaking hope. We're speaking life every day to each other, encouraging one another. And that is about us watering ourselves with the words of life and hope. And it may sound crazy to some people, but when God told Abraham that you're going to be a father of many nations, you're going to have this, he believed, the Bible says, 
He believed, not looking at the deadness of his body, like that was Sarah. He did not look at his age, and neither did Sarah look at the deadness of her body, but they believed the word of God. And that is what God is asking each one of us to do, to believe, to believe what his word says, to speak hope into ourselves. And then another thing about us watering ourselves, the water is not just by the words that we speak, but what are we also thinking about ourselves? Do we believe that we're worthy of a relationship? Not, you know, do we believe that we're worthy of somebody coming to know us? Do we believe that we have something to give to somebody? The Bible says you are. The Bible says that each one of us are because we are made in his image. We have Christ in us. We have the Holy Spirit in us. We have so much to give. And so I, myself and my cousin, we've passed that stage of now saying, oh God, when, when, when? But we're saying, I thank you for my in-law. My prayer to her the other day was like, I'm so happy that our in-laws get on with each other, that they are men of prayer. They are men that are looking after us, that like each other. Are these men present now? No, they're not, but by faith they are. So this is about us. So that's what I just want to say about us watering ourselves and watering other people as well. Speaking truth and life to other people as well so that other people may flourish by the words that we speak. Our words are powerful. The Bible talks about death and life are in the, in the power of the tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So we need to speak words of of hope, encouragement to people every day. Like Orisha Shola said, she prays over the plants and what she prays, she's seeing. And we have to be like that, that when I pray those blessings over you, in time, I'm going to see it. And by the grace of God, when you speak those blessings over me as well, in time, you will see what you have spoken over my life. So that's really what I just want to say this evening. Fumilayo, thank you, thank you, thank you so, 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 so much. I can't thank you enough. People, please, in the in the comments, please thank uh, um, Reverend Fumilayo uh, for taking time out to actually share with us uh, tonight. I can't thank you enough, my dear cousin. I've learned so much from you, and I'm grateful to God um, that I have you in my life. Yes, um, I can see, um, you know, people saying thank you. Um, thank you so much for and Reverend Fumilayo, um, she has to go. So she, I don't know if one or two people have any questions for her, um, but if you do, I can take the questions and go back and ask her. Or oh, Andrew's got a question. So um, Fumilayo, do you mind answering one question? Yes, um, yeah, that's okay. Okay. Andrew? Hello. Um, it's not so much um, a question, but more just a, something you said just now resonated with me so much, where you, you were saying about, you know, are we are we worthy? Um, this is a conversation I actually had with God um, last night. Um, long, so short, um, that's just, it didn't get anywhere because they're going to move away. But someone basically added me on Insta and I was like, wow, this person is amazing. And I was like, Lord, this just seems too good to be true. And I was really doubting it. And I just felt God say, and I want to share this with others. I hope it's best as someone. I felt God say to me, Andrew, do you really think so lowly of yourself that you don't think you're worthy of my blessing? Mm -hmm. And what I felt, uh, that I, just, I, I was blown away. I thought, I, I can't argue with that. Mm. And I think so often it's, it's so mm. easy for us to think, oh, you know, we're not worth it. And I think actually mm. we are worth it. So yes, I, I just yeah. want to encode to someone else as, mm. as well. Fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing yeah. that, Andrew. Yeah. Fumila, do you have anything you want to just... Yes, you know, um, we, you know, Andrew, you are worthy. You know, uh, when we think about God spoke over you, God is speaking over you and he's not saying terrible things. He's saying good things so that he can see the manifestation of his word in your life. So we need to echo each one of us. And I speak to myself as well. Each one of us, we need to get to that place where we're echoing, where we are repeating what God is saying over us. You know, he is saying good things. So my dear brother, you need to see yourself as worthy. You need to know yourself as worthy of, of somebody loving you. You are worthy of being loved because you are a lovely person. Mm. Wow. You know what I mean? You are a wonderful person because God says you are. 
So it doesn't matter what society or what you may even think. You tell you. So you water yourself and tell yourself, I am worthy of being loved. I am worthy because I am a kind, I am a child of God. So therefore, I water my soul, I water my life, and I speak to myself and I say, Andrew, you are a wonderful person, worthy of love, because who, what you have, that person is worthy of what you have as well. So water yourself. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Fumilaya. Thank you so much, Andrew. Thank you. Okay. Just very, yeah. just very quickly, Fearless Robin, I'm not sure if you have a question very quickly for Rev Reverend Fumilaya because she has to, to go in a minute. Um, Fearless Robin, if you have a question. Yeah, thank you very much, Fumilaya, for your wonderful teaching. Yeah, my question for you is, how do you combine the three factors, your thoughts, your words and your action because sometimes people say things they mm. confess positively but the action are contradictory to what you're saying so you have mm. to have a correlation between your actions yeah. your thoughts and your words so how do you fuse the three together to ensure you're on the right path because you have to say these things and actually mean it by your actions yes. taking those steps yeah. you can't say i want to get married and you're there probably doing the wrong, I, I can't even think of examples yeah. right now, but you're doing things yeah. contrary to what you want. So mm. it has to be some, so could you just expand yeah. on that part, please? Thank you. So, know, the, 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 um, so your, the mind, our words and actions, yeah, is what you're saying. It's, it's, it's going to be, oh God, my phone is going funny. It's going to be a journey. We have to, you know, the Bible talks about bringing down those imaginations. We need to cast down those negative imaginations, you know, um, and say, no, this is this is a lie. I'm not going to believe that. I'm going to put that aside. And then when we put that aside, begin to speak, like I said, what the Bible says. And then we need to um, to correspond it with our action. But it's not something that we do in a day. You know, so we need, there's a process in all of this that's taking place. And so we need to be kind to ourselves. Don't beat yourself up. If you think one thing, you say one thing, you do it. Don't beat yourself up. Get back up again. Get back up again and say, you know what? I thought this and I, and I said this, you know what, God, let me put that aside. Let's start again. Because so often we, we, we condemn ourselves and therefore we don't say anything. We don't say anything. And this applies to every area of our life, not just in this relationship then, but in other areas, we give up and we feel so condemned. I'm not going to, going to bother. The place where my cousin and I are at at the moment, it took a while, you know, for me to actually like, for Malaya, you're, you're, you're praying for your in-law. You're speaking about this in-law every day, but it's now become a part of our conversation. So the question for us now is not, when, but thanks, as what Minister said the other day. So I've I have come now to 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 I'm on salt, and I'll share this to you just to and I'm, this is not to anybody to feel sorry anything like that. I, I'm on salt, and I'm like Lord, I haven't seen anybody, and before I would have been discouraged. But you know what? I don't get discouraged anymore because I know my husband is around somewhere in the world. So my action now is like Lord, I thank you because I'm believing and I'm waiting. You know what I mean? So I so um, I have moved past any negativity of what I don't see and I'm holding on to what I believe by faith has taken place. And therefore my mind and my words must correspond. So I will encourage each person, if you have a close um, somebody that you can speak to on a daily basis or on a weekly basis, that you can encourage each other because we can't do our Christian walk on our own. It was never meant to be on our own. Christ didn't expect the disciples to walk alone. They had each other. Even he had them to walk with. So get a confidence, somebody that you can fully, you know, crazily say, how is your husband? How is your wife? How are your children? If for those that want children and you speak to each other and you encourage one another and, and then you, that, that, that's when accountability comes in. So if that other person is now doing crazy things, you've got that accountability partner to say, I don't think your action is good. Your action is not lining up to what we're saying. Don't be desperate. Uh, uh, somebody that's worthy, don't be desperate. You know, the right person will find you or you will find the right person. Don't be desperate. Chill out. Chill yourself out. Respect yourself. Because in all of this, we must respect ourselves. 
We must respect price. Christ has paid a high price for each one of us. So don't sell yourself cheap. Don't sell yourself cheap. Okay. So those are the kind of actions and thought life and, uh, and our behavior that we must do. Please, none of us should sell ourselves cheap. We are so worthy. And get yourself a spiritual field accountability brother or sister that you can share with and encourage one another with. And that will help us in our journey of faith in this area of relationships and in every other area of our Christian walk. Because at the end of it, we want to end well until Jesus Christ comes back or he calls us to himself. Amen. Amen. Um, Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Malaya. Thank you. Thank you. Just so many nuggets in there, guys. I hope this is blessing you. Thank you so much, Arempu Malaya. I won't keep you any further because I know you did say you can't stay on for the full duration. Thank you. Guys, please, please, please say thank you to Reverend Pumilayo. I know um, that you have been blessed by what she said. I'm not saying this because she's my cousin, but I tell you, this woman is I, you know, I'm not saying this because she's my cousin, but she is one mighty powerhouse. I'm telling you. Um, okay. Um, Fumlayo, thank you so much. And uh, Fearless Robin, thank you so much for coming up and asking that question as well. Um, guys, please, in the comments, I just want you guys to let me know what scriptures you're standing on or one scripture that you're standing on. I believe um, Angel shared one earlier on, but it's gone, you know, too far up now. I can't even find it. So the one I'm standing on is 2 Corinthians uh, 1 20. Um, if anyone wants to come up and read that, that's fine. Or I can read that out to yourselves. Um, that's what I'm standing on. So guys, start to get yourselves ready because I'm going to call people up to come and share whatever God has laid on their hearts to share this evening. So I'm standing on 2 Corinthians 1 24. Every one of us, every one of God's promises is yes in him. Therefore, through him, we also say amen to the glory of God. Guys, you know, tonight, oh, fantastic. So Hedway he, 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 he says she, um, um, her scripture is Isaiah 34, 16, uh, verse 17. Please let me know what um, scriptures you guys are standing on. I want to see the scriptures coming through. Come on, guys. Come on. Uh, Angel says that's my one. That's what's on his T-shirt as well. Fantastic. You know, I may tell a few stories this evening. You know, um, let me just share this as well. You know, when, when my cousin said, make sure you find someone who is spirit filled, someone who you can you, you, you can be accountable to. So many years ago, many years ago, I read something somewhere and I, I actually created this little book, you know, and like a journal. I was journaling in there just praying for my husband, talking about my husband and stuff like that. And a friend, well, uh, uh, an acquaintance, she's no longer a friend, came along and she saw this book. And the words she spoke, I can't even start. She spoke some very negative words. And guys, you never guess what I did. Do you know I got rid of that book because I thought I was crazy. I completely forgot the word of God in Romans says, call those things that be not as though they are. So I, I just got rid of the book because she, she actually did say to me, oh my goodness, you've gone crazy. But later on, many years after that, I realized this woman doesn't believe the way I believe. This woman doesn't, you know, she doesn't worship the way I worship, you know. And why did I listen to what she said? And I'm not saying because of that, my husband hasn't turned up. But, you know, we have to be consistent in the things that we do, you know. So these are just my, you know, what I just want to share with you guys. Um, if that would serve, I can encourage somebody this evening. Um, the stories I've shared about my gardening and how the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Um, and my neighbor, I wish I could play a message. One of the neighbors actually sent to me. She said, do you know that now when I walk through the gate, I actually walk slowly because I want to take in the beauty. And you may, you may think, why am I using the, the, you know, the garden and plants and stuff like that? But it's amazing how God will use even the seemingly foolish things to confound the wise, honestly. So she says she walks slowly. She's looking forward to the plants blooming. And I thought to myself, how is the condition of my heart, my life? What am I sowing? How am I watering? What am I tending? You know, am I blooming? What, you know, I, all of these thoughts are they coming to me. And I thought I'd bring that to the table this evening. So guys, please, I'm tired of listening to the sound of my own voice. We've had the fantastic, uh, wonderful uh, Reverend Pumilayo and she's gone now. So please, I want someone to come up now and share the stage with me. Bless, bless Platypus, you've got the microphone as 
the other hand start coming up. Blessed platypus, you got the microphone, you got the microphone, you got the microphone. Okay. Hello. Hello. This is Evelyn here. How are you? So what's your oh hi Evelyn? Hello. I don't know why I'm like this. I said it in the previous table. I'm suddenly the blessed platypus. So <laughs> I love the name. I love the name. <laughs> <laughs> well, seeing I'm coming to you from Sydney, Australia, yes, it's really appropriate. Um, look, thank you so much for bringing your cousin up to speak. That was just lovely. And I just wanted to quickly share because, you know, it's important for other people to speak and share too. Um, firstly, if you're someone who's grown up in a home where negative things were spoken to you, it can actually make you feel so demoralised and discouraged. And um, throughout my life, I've actually come to the place where I have seen how that has affected me as a person and how it affects people around me. So the analogy of the garden, the flowers, is so beautiful because it helps us to actually look at something real in creation and to be encouraged about gardens and the joy of just, as they say, smelling the roses. But if you if you can learn and and appreciate that sort of thinking, it also feeds to relationships. So in speaking about a dating relationship or a romantic relationship, when you love yourself the way God sees you and you love each other the way God sees you together, what happens is you become like a beautiful flower mm. and the gardener comes along and he digs up the soil, is very careful when he plants a new flower not to stress the root system, is very careful not to put the plant the plant into the wrong light, is very careful to plant at the right time of the year and is very careful to protect that flower to make sure it can grow and doesn't throw dirt on it. So... It, these are analogies that are so precious and thank you so much for today. I have to go now, but I just wanted to quickly share that. So it's been an encouraging morning. God bless you. Thank you so much, Evelyn. Thank you for coming up and sharing those very wise words. Honestly, um, I love the Holy Spirit and how he works. Um, I can't thank you enough for actually coming up. Um, I know it's early for you. Um, for taking the time out to actually share with us. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for those wise words. Um, please, everyone, do say thank you to Evelyn. I can see the comments coming in already. Um, so I need I need someone to come up. Guys, or I see you all are chatting in the comments. And forgive me if I don't read all the comments tonight or pin them up. I'm going to ask some questions. And I want, oh, thank you, Angel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't want to hear my voice all evening. Or morning your time so um angel you've got the microphone hey how are you i'm good thank you yourself i'm great i'm great um so i just um as you guys are talking about the garden i just had like this visual god uses me like very visually i get i see a lot of things and um so i don't know uh, you know i'm american i don't know if you guys do this in wherever you're from but um well let me start with this so i believe that that we are part of God's garden, right? Mm -hmm. So I could see him, you know, and a lot of times we go through different seasons where we are underground and we're not noticed and we feel like in a, we're in a dark place, but we're not to stay in that dark place. You know, we have to come up um, above the darkness, above and actually sprout forth. Um, kind of thing. So sometimes in our dating experience, we feel like we're underground. We feel hidden. We feel like we are noticed. We feel like we're going through some stuff alone. We feel alone. But once we come up out of that, you know, people throwing dirt on us and all this stuff, um, we come up out of that place, we get to see the sunlight and we lean towards the sun. 
and we grow up in that direction and then we start to bloom and everything starts to look beautiful in the garden of life like the garden of eden right so a lot of times the, the visual i had was here in america like i know we've we've done this like some people they take a rose from their garden they pluck it out and they start thinking and they pluck a stem she loves me or he loves me and then plucks another one she loves me not he loves me not pluck another another one she loves me or he loves me you know whoever um you asking about and you end up with a rose that's been plucked and is totally destroyed because you know we are in a place of assumption or we're trying to guess if somebody loves us like you know let's say that jesus for instance like pluck he loves me jesus loves me jesus doesn't love me jesus loves me and you're plucking out and at the end of that when we come into a place where we are second guessing or we doubting the love of god or doubting that we can be loved then we end up with nothing we end up with just a stem hmm. to be thrown away you know so let us not get in that position where we are um doubting our love doubting that we are loved doubting that we are not worthy doubting that we have nothing to offer and we start to put this thing in a fantasy world of oh you know does this person love me when we know that we are lovable that we know that we are lovely we're fearfully wonderful me so um that's the vision that i had with like somebody plucking away on at a rose you know that's already been bloomed and we are we are self sabotaging ourselves as we pluck things out of our own lives when we should take the rose and leave it grounded and planted and watering like your friend you know, the guest was saying speaking over yourself as well speaking life watering ourselves with the word of god um as well so i pause wow. there Wow, 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 wow. Thank you so much Angel. You should see me. I was nodding away as you were speaking. Wow, thank you so much and I think someone shares my sentiments. You go, "Wow, Angel, thanks for sharing." You know, you got the thumbs up there. Thank you. You know, as you were talking, I remembered the bamboo, you know, the bamboo tree. Does anyone know the story about the bamboo tree? Apparently, the yes. bamboo tree, yeah, before it actually shoots up, it goes something fantastic is happening down below that nobody can see so guys i don't know this evening you know as i'm talking my legs are actually shaking underneath the table i don't know why because i just love the way that my friends if they were here they would tell you i believe in what i call crazy faith and i just believe that god wants to do something this evening like i said i'm no preacher or teacher i'm just an encourager and I felt the Holy Spirit strongly say, how are you watering your garden? And I saw Andrew actually put a comment that it's not just watching it. How are you maintaining that garden? Guys, if it will take the Lord to get me to start gardening, me who doesn't, I don't do very well with plants. But every day, honestly, even yesterday lunchtime, I, as soon as it was time for lunch, I was working from home. I ran downstairs to go and see the plants. Then I'm looking, oh, how are you doing? Oh, please don't die. And some of you may think, but that's crazy. What are you doing? Just, you know, going crazy over plants. But maybe that's just how God wants to teach me or somebody else here tonight, how we need to take care of our the gardens of our lives, our hearts, you know. God, I, I hope this is doing something for somebody. I, I can't even get the words out, honestly. God wants to do something with this topic tonight. So please, guys, don't take tonight's message lightly. And like I said, I, I don't come here claiming to know it all. But when the Holy Spirit does his stuff, because let me go back to last week. Last week, some of the feedback I got, a couple of people came on there and said, I am so grateful I came on that the, the somewhat, I think the last two skits was exactly what they needed to hear. God will use anything, including a garden, including what the 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 the, 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 the analogy angel just used now about the you know someone plucking a rose loves me loves me not you know don't take any of these things for, you know you know for, for granted you know it may not be for you but it may be for somebody here it may be for somebody here. Everyone's very quiet. 
<laughs> everyone, <laughs> when I say everyone's very quiet, I know I can't hear all of you at the same time, but I can't see the hands going up. But Angel, I believe they're soaking it all in. I believe that's what's that's going on. Good. Can yeah. I read a scripture? Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, please. Um, Psalms 92, uh, verses 12 through 15. It says, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing. To declare that the Lord is upright, he is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. So I just want to declare that, that there's a flourishing, and I want to speak that into the atmosphere. I want to speak it into you guys, and I want to speak life into you guys, that you will flourish. You're not going to wither away. You're going to flourish. Even for us that are older in age, that we're still going to bear fruit in our old age. We're still going to be fresh. We're still going to be out there. We're going to be flourishing. And whatever you put your hands to do, um, whether you be single or whatever, in this place of singleness, we could put our hands to the plow even more and produce much fruit. Some of us, we have produced some fruit, but a lot, of, you know, for us to bear much fruit, there's a difference between some fruit and much fruit, according to, I believe, John 15. And sometimes we have to be cut and pruned. And some of the things that need to be cut and pruned off our life is those negative thoughts, those self-doubts, those fears, uh, um, the, the, all the things that were mentioned earlier that are negative. Those are the things that need to be cut off of our lives for us to take a hold of the, the true fruit of the Spirit. There's nine fruits for a reason. So we need to come into that place where we don't limit God or limit ourselves, knowing that we will bear the fruits that's needed for us to be married. And it's just sometimes it takes longer time. Some fruits take longer to, to produce, but we are still being productive in our singleness. So I just want to, I just saw a couple of people on joint, so I'm going to pause now. So be fruitful and multiply in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Angel. Thank you so much. For anyone who's just joined the conversation, um, I know this will be actually put on YouTube. You will have to go listen to the replay. Angel, as you were talking, I had my hands up. I just don't know why I had to have, had, you know, but I just felt God wanted me to put my hands up. You know, I thank you for speaking life over everybody tonight. I will hand the microphone to Sen. Is it Sen? Yeah. Hi. Uh, good evening, everyone. Good and, evening. Uh, uh, thank you for the uh, analogy you made with regards to the garden that actually blessed me. And sometimes it can be difficult to actually, uh, sometimes we are waiting for something and it's not forthcoming physically. Sometimes we must have received that particular stuff spiritually, but due to the lack of faith, we might not, and circumstances surrounding us, it can be very difficult at that particular point in time when you're trying to weigh. And, and again, uh, I just want to encourage singles like myself that, um, you know, you, you are looking uh, for a situation whereby you can mingle so that that, uh, that, that can actually translate into uh, marriage. But we should do this from a position of rest because Christ has won the victory for us over the Christ uh, over the cross. We should we should we should approach this from a position of rest and not be desperate uh, about it. And uh, our prayers should align with our thinking as well. All right, we must be reformed from our thinking as well to align with the promises God has made in terms of. Uh, uh, a, a life partner, because I believe for everyone, there's always someone out there for us. Because the, God didn't make, create anybody single. He said, that for you, a help me. There's always if a, a help me for any man or any lady out there. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you so much, Sen. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, you know, um, we are Christians and we have to work by faith. Um, so by the grace of God, I believe everybody here is working by faith. And I believe that we will not be desperate. So Rachel, you've got the microphone. Hello. Um, I 
I'm I'm listening to a book called um, The Garden Within um, a, um, by Dr. Anita Phillips. And um, she's been bas- basically, um, it's also about your emotions. Um, so what the more i'm i'm losing track here so my bear with me so um, okay. where the war of your our emotions end and the the most pow- powerful life begins so it's kind of yeah we need to kind of um I've completely lost track. That's okay. Um, <laughs> okay, so the, the 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 name of the book is the Garden Within, and and who is it by? Um, and Dr. Anita Phillips. Anita Phillips. I think I've seen her on um Instagram. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. I will definitely be looking that book up definitely so basically you know I, I just believe for you to come on here and say you've been listening to that book and the Holy Spirit told me about the garden like I said you know I love to obey the Holy Spirit so the Spirit is one you know the Spirit is one and yeah. I'm glad that somebody else has actually latched onto what I believe God is doing now about us just watching tending the gardens of our hearts our lives you know so thank you so much Rachel for I was also going to say um I've just brought some flowers myself to plant out and um, at the garden centre they said um, to um, pull out the buds at the moment Mm -hmm. to bring the root, the bring more um, nourishing, nourishment to Mm -hmm. the roots um, for it to flower better. So it's like God's saying we need, yeah, we need to kind of deal with our emotions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm so, probably not making sense. No, but. you are. No, you are. You are making a lot of sense because even as you were talking, it just reminded me of something Angel men- mentioned, you know, sometimes there could be pruning involved. So like even in planting, you need to actually plant properly. You can't just take a plant and just say, I'm just going to just chuck it over the soil. You you, you, you probably, I mean, I'm not like an avid gardener, but I'm learning. You, you probably, yeah. some, for certain plants, you probably have to dig deep. For some, maybe just the surface. For some, you don't have to water, water too much. For some, that it doesn't need too much sunshine or, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's the same with our lives. But thank you so much, Rachel. So I see Bethan's on stage. Uh, Bethan, you got the microphone. Hi. Um, I think everything you said tonight has just like resonated with me so much and I definitely think it's the Holy Spirit moving, it's crazy. Um, but I've had I've had a really bad experience recently. So I did match with a guy and, I, and I've gone through a period of singleness and I was like, oh my days, this is my guy and God, you've brought me my guy. And, and you know, it was going really well and then it didn't and he lost a bit of interest and I decided to end it because it you know, and I, and I was really low. I've been really low about it. Like, you know, I thought that God had brought me this guy and he hasn't. And I just had this word from God saying, I'm only just getting started with you. Like, this is a growing period for you. And I feel like he's using these periods for people in sharpening our discernment as to who is right for us and who isn't. And that can be in all aspects, friendships, everything. Um. And I've been listening to, he's really old school, um, Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones, a Welsh preacher from like back in the 1950s, great preacher. And he wrote a book on spiritual depression and how pe- Christians get down and depressed. And and he said, talk, he goes, talks about the armour of God. And when the devil is throwing those arrows at you, those lies, he says, hold up your shield of faith in assurance of things that you have not seen and have faith in and I've been and he tells you exactly what you've been saying tonight preach to yourself tell these promises of God to yourself so every time I felt down I've gone no no Satan no I trust in God um you know use the sword of the spirit use God's word and speak these promises over yourself if you know if 
preach to yourself, preach these good words. Um, and yeah, so the, this whole thing with the garden and growing, it's, and you know, looking after your garden, it's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll just mute you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Bethan, for just coming up and sharing that as well. As you were talking, as all of you, Rachel, Angel, everyone who's come up talking, honestly, guys, my chair just feels like I'm sitting on like, you know, hot stones, honestly, not, not hell stones. Like, you know, when you're just like, wow, God, wow, God, wow, God. You know, Bethan, as you were talking, before I came on this evening, before I logged on this evening, the enemy came and was saying to me, what's that you're going to share, garden? Who wants to listen to a talk about gar gardening? The people are just going to come on here and say, that's rubbish. That's absolute rubbish. Guys, you know what I did? I went to the mirror in front of my hallway. My dog was looking at me and thought I was crazy. I stood in front of the mirror and I reminded myself of who God says I am. And if the Holy Spirit says, this is what I want you to talk about, you are not even going to stand in the way of the Holy Spirit. And I decided to come on here and say, guys, let's have a heart to heart this evening. There's no way I'm going to stand in the way of the Holy Spirit. And I'm so grateful to God that I did not let the enemy try to steal what God himself has in store for all of us with this word about the garden. Go on, Angel. Mm, I'm just, oof, oh my gosh. I, I'm just literally visualizing our Lord, our Creator, in the very beginning, as he was creating Adam, he created him from the dust, the dirt of the earth, the soil. He formed him, right? So it's like, that's the garden. He's forming the soil in our lives, but yet he just didn't form it and leave it there. He took his very breath and placed it on the nostrils and breathed the ruach, the, 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 the wind, the life of God in him. And if he, if God had to do that to Adam, the ruach, the words, the wind, the breath into us, we have to do the same to live. Like when he said, let there be, and there was. So when we start proclaiming and saying, let there be my wife, let there be your husband, let there be, I shall produce this and declare things of ourselves. We're speaking forth life so it's like we need like the dirt the soil needs that breath needs those words to produce you know and i don't know i just seeing that it's like it's so important that we grab a hold of that that we were created this way that's the format that's how that's how things are formed you know <laughs> like he gave adam the the, the ability to, to name the animals we we are able to name some things. Like we have the creative words in our mouths based on the word of God. So I don't know. I'm just I'm just anyway, let me stop. <laughs> let me stop. Angel, just just you know, as the spirit leads, you know, just speak, just speak, just speak, just speak, because I just believe the Holy Spirit wants to do something, you know, in all of us using this garden as I don't know, just just speak, speak. Mm, I just, oh man, I, I just want to say, like, it's time for us to take courage. Like, it's time for us to encourage ourselves in the Lord. Like, there's a place where we could get to in the Lord that we say, like I wrote earlier, Lord, you said it's not good for a man to be alone. Lord, you said, Lord, you said, like, it's okay to come to God in that way. I, I'm reminded, you know, a, a long time, you're talking about you going to the mirror, um, Sola. Like, mm -hmm. I remember a long time ago, I went to South Africa on a mission trip, and I got to go through this thing called soul care. And I was going through it, like, to counsel people and to be, you know, for deliverance and healing and stuff like that. It was a training, and I went through it myself. I went through a crash course, like, a quick thing, and I went through it, and I said, look, you know, whatever needs to be said or done, I'm an open heart, open vessel, you do what you need to do, um, and let's just go for it. I want to be healed in any way. And part of our garden, there's weeds, 
you know, that needs to be plucked out. There's some stuff that we as singles need to be healed from. And I think that's part of what God is doing now. Even in this table, he's healing people's hearts, even through this word. Right now, I feel like sometimes we do have to go to the mirror and face ourselves and go, you know what? Because when I was in South Africa and I was faced upon this huge mirror in front of me and the lady tells me, what do you see? What do you see? I want you to talk to yourself. And I'm like, what? What do you want me to say? She was like, what? You know what? Anything good you see? And I couldn't say at that point, I could not say anything good. Like I was lost for words. But then it was like anything bad. I was like, yeah, I don't like this about myself. I don't like this about myself. I, oh, I can't stand that about myself and all this stuff. But then the bottom line, it came in that season of my life. I was angry at God for something that happened to me when I was a child. Mm. The root of it was anger. So I could not speak a life to his creation because I was angry with him. And some of us might be in that place where we can't even look in the mirror and thank God for what he created. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. Some of us are, you know, naturally, like, at one point when I was younger, I didn't think I was cute or handsome. And people would be like, what's wrong with you? And I'm not trying to say this, you know, to boast anyway myself, but people were like, what's wrong with you? Look at you. You're very handsome. And I couldn't even say that about myself. And some of you guys here, you are very attractive in the natural. That's fine. But you don't see yourself that way. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but I feel like, you know, there's there's a, a there's a delusion. There's a, a thing that tries to come on us that causes us not to walk in what God has called us to walk in because we are angry at God or we are self-conscious or we are worried about what man has to say. We don't fear God. So I feel like there's a release that's going to needs to take place for us to really get the breakthrough that we need to be in a place where we could get married, that we're healthy that our garden is healthy and healed and made whole, not waiting on the man or the woman to come and plow our garden and, and fix us. That's not what God wants. He wants our garden like what he's doing with Sola now in the natural. He's preparing you, Sola, for your mate because he's telling you, fix your garden. Mm-hmm. Right? Get your garden and get your home intact. Get your home in, 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 a, in a healthy place. Mm-hmm. We are the temple of God. So I believe God is doing something powerful um, even now, even today with this with this table for your obedience. So, I, you know, mm-hmm. I believe many people could be blessed um, by what you're presenting on the table for us to eat today. So I, I definitely pause because I don't know if anybody else is waiting on the list to talk, but mm-hmm. I definitely want other people to share as well. Yeah. Amen. Thank you so much, Angel. Thank you so, so, so much. I'm not even going to, I just want people to soak in everything you've shared. There was somebody who came up just now and they disappeared. I was going to bring them up to speak because I believe everyone's got something to share. Um, So Salome says, confirm to me a lot. Um, I don't know. Salome, I'd love to hear your voice, actually. Do you you want to come up and and share what you feel has been confirmed to you by listening to tonight's talk? Um, And fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Hey, Salome. Hey, everyone. How's how's everyone doing? We're good. Yeah, I kind of joined in late today because I was at the gym. But um, yeah, no, um, well, I'm already in my healing journey. So, um, you know, obviously just going to therapy and working through issues and stuff like that. But today I actually was on YouTube. Um, I didn't search anything, but you know how recommendations come up like, on the side of your YouTube mm-hmm. um so this rec this video popped up on my recommendation today at work so I was like oh this is interesting I don't know why this is coming up but the video was um about understanding trauma and you know all of this kind of stuff so I was like okay let me just quickly w- listen to this and see what this guy is talking about and it was crazy because the statistics also like obviously I I saw some things that I could relate to but also the statistics of people that are actually not dealing with their trauma or even recognize their trauma and places where we need to heal from um is insane like absolutely insane um but and how that affects our relationships and how it affects you know 
the fact that we want to get married, we want to have kids, we want to, you know, we want to do all these things. But when you guys were talking about, you know, growing your garden and, you know, making sure that your garden is healthy and it's taken care of and, you know, all these things, it, it just put a lot of things into perspective because, yeah, we want to get married, we want to have kids and stuff like that. But once, if we're not actually taking care of ourselves now, in our singleness and in in the time that God has given us now to to kind of invest in our singleness um, and be fruitful in our singleness and heal from the things that have happened to us and we go ahead and get married, we're just continuing on this cycle. So yeah, I've kind of been um, listening to a lot of things today and when I jumped on today, I was like, Okay, I'm actually going to jump on today as today's like my last day on table or like on yeah, on table on salt. Um for a while because I really want to like focus on my healing journey and all of that stuff, so I want to be really focused on that. But I was like, okay, I'll join in I'll join in today as my last day <laughs> and then I'll go a few months without it. Um but it was interesting that you guys were talking about that garden thing. It just yeah, it really, really helped me. So thank you so much for um, sharing. And I'll definitely go back to the YouTube as well. Salome, thank you so much for coming up and sharing beautifully what you just sh shared now. And, you know, as you were saying, um, if we're not taking care of ourselves now, what are we going to do when we get married? We're going to take all of these things into marriage and all that. And I love the fact that you said you're actually taking time out to tend your garden. That's what you're doing. You're taking time out. And guess what, guys? There's nothing wrong with taking time out from anything to tend your garden. And that's what Salome is doing. I'm so glad she actually came up here to say that. Yes, this is salt. Yes, we want to meet people, blah, blah, blah. Yes, but there are times you need to take time out for yourself to take care of you. Till you get to that place where you feel, you know what, I'm, I'm blooming now. And God says, now go out. Or he, 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 he will put you out there and people would see you. Guys, I don't know what else to say, but if all you can take away from this table tonight is just like Angel said, just the Garden of Eden. When God created that garden, he put all these beautiful things. That's how he created us. He created us out of dust. So guys, we are the garden. We are. I love the way Angel put it. He breathed life into us. So people speaking to the plants, I don't think it's crazy. And I, I think someone says something about new age, whatever. You know, sometimes you just have to be very careful, you know, what the kind of things, you know. God, God, God was breathing into the soil and he made man out of the soil and everything. God wasn't crazy. So if I'm speaking to the soil and say, no, 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 my plants are, are not going to die. God created the soil as well. I, please, I'm using a lot of this analogy, but I hope it's making sense to you guys. I just want to say thank you so much to everybody who came on here tonight up to speak and everyone in the chat as well. I appreciate all of you. I'm not going to add any more to everything that's been shared. I just want you guys to go away, soak everything that we've all listened to tonight. I'm going to go away myself and I'm going to soak it all up. And I'm, I pray that this goes on to YouTube very quickly. Forgive me that I didn't you know, read out comments tonight, but I tried to share some um, as much as I could. Guys, how is your garden growing? I'm going to leave you with that question. How is your garden growing? As I tend the physical garden downstairs, outside where I live, it's not about just that garden. The Holy Spirit is using that to teach me to tend my garden. Okay. So what are we talking about next week? Because... I was going to start coming up with topics, but the Holy Spirit said, somebody in here is going to come up with a topic that needs to be talked about. I want to see your suggestions for next week. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you all so much. Nad, I saw what you wrote in there, my dear. God's got you. God's got you. God's got you. You wait and see. Andrew says ghosting. Andrew, I like that one. Guess what? I have a big story to tell about that one. Ghosting. Okay. Okay. Ghosting. Mm-hmm.
So what else, 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 what, what else can we bring to the table? It's only Andrew's ghosting, going, 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 going. No one else is saying anything, Andrew. Long distance relationship. Um, best and worst communication skills. Oh my God, now they're all coming. You know what, guys? Just because I don't get to see the comments after the, um, after the, the, the table, the event ends, please, can I beg of you, can you go and put it in the feedback, please? So I can grab it all from there. And you know what, guys? I'm going to get very creative with the Holy Spirit. So we can roll with maybe two or three, roll them all into one and bring them all to the table next week. But please, please, please go and put it in the feedback, please. I beg of you, Broken Vessel, please put it in the feedback, please, please, because I, I won't get to see this um, when this is over. Please put it in the feedback. You see, I, I'm re repeating myself so you don't forget. Go put it in the feedback. Go put it in the feedback. Put it, put it, put it, put it in the feedback. Yeah. And whilst you're doing that, please let me know what tonight was like for you. Um, and uh, don't forget, Big Church Festival, let's meet over there. And then also, please, if you put your name down for the London meetup as well, cancel June from your mind. Let's look more at July, August. But, um, you know, August, a lot of things happen in August as well in London. So uh, we need to be careful about that month as well. So I would love to see a lot of people. And it's going to be a very simple, fun event, you know, but I'll talk more about it Um um, when I send email, emails out to people again. So please, please, please put it. Fantastic, Andrew. Thank you for putting in the feedback. So I'm giving you guys a few more minutes to put all of these topics in the feedback. Please, 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 please. Yes, 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 yes. I'm waiting. And who's going to come up and say opening prayers? Salome, are you still up there? Angel has said opening prayers a few times. Salome, do you want to say, not opening prayers, closing prayers? <laughs> closing yeah, prayers. I can pray. Fantastic. Thank you. No problem. Lord, we thank you so much for bringing us here. We thank you for um, for edifying us, Lord, in your presence. We thank you for um, Auntie Shola's obedience to you. God, we thank you that we can gather and not take it for granted. We thank you that we can fellowship among other believers, come together and give give um what you have already shown us in our secret places lord we ask that you would go before every single person we ask that um the word that has been brought forward that they would be able to digest it will be able to take it in their hearts and actually um you'd start applying it into their own lives into their daily lives and lord we ask that you would continue to encourage those that are in a place of discouragement or in a place of where they have lost some hope in terms of their relationships or dating or whatever the case may be, Lord, you know, we don't know, but we ask that you would go before each and every single one of these people in Jesus mighty name. Amen. 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 You've got such a sweet voice, very sweet voice. Do you sing? No, show life. I sang. I think no, I don't sing. <laughs> okay, but you got such a beautiful, soothing voice. Beautiful. Thank you so much for that beautiful prayer. And you know what, guys? You know, I need to share this with you because I've been meaning to share it. You know, and I keep forgetting. Guys, do you know that I'm accountable to all of you? You'll be like, what? What? You 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 don't know where we live. You don't know us. Blah blah. I am accountable. You know. I can't even afford, I, I said to my friend the other day, I said, I just love what God is doing this season of my life. I, when I think of all of you, when I think, when your names cross my, I can't even afford to mess up my garden. No, no, I can't. I just can't afford to mess up my garden, honestly. So I love the fact that God is holding me. I'm accountable to you guys. Yeah, honestly, I am. I am. You're probably thinking, what you talk? I am accountable to you guys. Yes, I am. I told my friend this the other day. She was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thank you all so much. It's been awesome. I thank the Holy Spirit for everything he's done tonight. And I just leave you guys with the picture of the garden in your hearts as you go to sleep tonight. May God just breathe over you, minister to you, all of you in whichever way he chooses to. God bless you all. I appreciate all of you. Angel says, I've got pastoral care. <laughs> I'm a 
creative. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, Angel. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much. God bless you.